Dr. Martin Moore Eady discusses the significant health risks associated with exposure to blue light at night. He cites a study of over 880,000 people in England that found those with the most light exposure at night had a 40% higher risk of dying from cardiovascular disease and a 30% higher risk of death from all causes compared to those who slept in darkness. This effect was as large as the difference between smokers and non-smokers. Conversely, those who got the most light exposure during the day lived longer. Dr. Moore emphasizes that blue light is not inherently bad, but exposure at the wrong times disrupts our circadian rhythms and health. Dr. Moore shares a shocking statistic. Women who have never been exposed to electric light rarely get breast cancer, while women regularly exposed to bright electric light after sunset have breast cancer rates five or more times higher. He explains that our bodies evolved over millions of years to be regulated by bright daylight and darkness at night. Modern electric lighting, especially LEDs, contains high levels of blue light that disrupts our circadian rhythms and melatonin production. This suppresses the body's natural cancer-fighting mechanisms. Dr. Moore states that based on the evidence, blue-rich electric light at night may be the tobacco of breast cancer. Studies have found a 50% increase in breast cancer among women who work night shifts. The World Health Organization has classified shift work as a probable carcinogen due to the light exposure. However, he clarifies that it's not just shift workers at risk. Anyone exposed to blue-rich light at night, even while sleeping, faces increased cancer risk. Dr. Moore explains that the problem is twofold. We're getting too much artificial blue light at night, but also not enough natural sunlight during the day. Most people now spend over 90% of their time indoors in dim lighting of only 300 to 500 lux, compared to 10,000 to 100,000 lux outdoors. Getting regular bright light exposure, especially in the morning, is crucial for health. He cites a study finding that psychiatric patients in south east facing hospital rooms with morning sunlight were discharged in half the time of those in northwest facing rooms. Overall, studies show that sunlight exposure greatly reduces deaths from cardiovascular disease and other illnesses, more than offsetting any skin cancer risk. Dr. Moore advises getting outside for about an hour a day, ideally in the morning, to properly set our circadian rhythms. Dr. Moore discusses his team's role in discovering the suprachiasmatic nucleus, SCN, the master circadian clock in the human brain. Previously, scientists thought humans lacked this clock found in other animals. His team identified it by examining brain slices that had been overlooked. The SCN receives light signals directly from the eyes and coordinates millions of cellular clocks throughout the body. When the master clock is not properly synchronized by bright blue light during the day and darkness at night, it leads to a discordant orchestra effect where bodily functions fall out of sync. This disrupts sleep, metabolism, immune function, and overall health. Dr. Moore explains how blue-rich light at night increases hunger, snacking, and disrupts glucose metabolism. His research found that people under standard LED lighting at night have more hunger and snack twice as much compared to blue free lighting. Even healthy people show pre-diabetic glucose responses after one night of blue light exposure. This creates a metabolic syndrome in real time just from light exposure. Proper lighting can reverse these effects. Dr. Moore's research led to the development of LED lights engineered to remove the harmful blue wavelengths while still appearing white. These are now available as consumer light bulbs under the brand Sora Zero Blue. He also mentions blue blocking glasses, but cautions that many block the wrong wavelengths. Proper ones should block the 460, 495 nanometer range. For phones and screens, he advises using built-in blue light filters and avoiding use before bed. New computer and phone screens are being developed to automatically adjust blue light levels throughout the day. Dr. Moore emphasizes creating a light diet, getting blue-rich light in the morning day, reducing it in the evening, and sleeping in darkness. He recommends blackout curtains for bedrooms to block outside light pollution. Dr. Moore outlines the serious health consequences of not addressing our light exposure issues, increased rates of psychiatric illness, chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease, weakened immune function, 
and shortened lifespans. Proper lighting in workplaces has been shown to reduce sick leave, absenteeism, and turnover while improving overall well-being. He stresses that this is an easy environmental factor we can control to greatly impact our health, productivity, and longevity. Dr. Moore shares his personal experience developing prostate cancer, likely influenced by years of nighttime light exposure while researching circadian rhythms. As a surgical resident, he experienced severe cognitive effects from disrupted circadian rhythms due to long shifts under fluorescent lighting. These experiences motivated his research into healthy lighting. He expresses frustration that despite the robust scientific evidence from thousands of researchers, public awareness of light's health impacts remains low. He attributes this partly to commercial interests in the lighting industry and regulatory bodies focused solely on energy efficiency rather than health effects. Dr. Moore provides several practical recommendations for healthier light exposure. One, turn off overhead lighting at dusk and use lower, dimmer light sources in the evening. Two, use red amber bulbs or blue-free LED bulbs in bedrooms and bathrooms. Three, wear proper blue blocking glasses in the evening if unable to control ambient lighting. Four, get outside for bright natural light exposure, especially in the morning. 5. Use blackout curtains in bedrooms. 6. Avoid phone screen use before bed and keep devices out of the bedroom. 7. Look for new lighting technologies that automatically adjust blue light levels throughout the day. Dr. Moore emphasizes that unhealthy lighting affects nearly everyone in the modern world, but solutions are straightforward once people are educated. He asks listeners to read and share his book, The Light Doctor, to spread awareness, especially to decision makers who can implement healthy lighting in workplaces, schools, and healthcare facilities. He mentions an upcoming campaign for healthy lighting at circadianlight.org. He stresses that addressing our light environment is as impactful for health as major lifestyle factors like diet and exercise, yet it's a simple fix once people understand the issue. Dr. Moore traces how lighting technology has evolved from fire and candles with virtually no blue content to fluorescent lights in the 1960s, 70s to modern LEDs that are highly blue rich for energy efficiency. He explains how regulations focused solely on lumens per watt efficiency have inadvertently created health hazards by promoting blue rich lighting. However, he's optimistic about new lighting technologies being developed to balance energy efficiency with health. He sees this as a critical time where we have both the scientific understanding and technological solutions to address the problem. While focusing mainly on human health, Dr. Moore also touches on how excessive artificial lighting harms other species. He notes that using proper window coverings not only benefits our sleep, but reduces light pollution affecting wildlife. He frames healthy lighting choices as part of our responsibility to the 8.7 million other species on Earth. Dr. Moore highlights how, ironically, hospitals and healthcare facilities often have some of the worst lighting for circadian health. This is particularly problematic as patients are already vulnerable. He mentions that some European facilities are implementing circadian lighting systems in nursing homes and hospitals with positive results, but adoption is still slow in many places. Dr. Moore clarifies that while much attention has focused on blue light's impact on sleep, the health effects are much broader. He explains that sleep is determined by both circadian rhythms and accumulated fatigue, so short-term sleep studies often miss the larger impacts of chronic circadian disruption. The metabolic, hormonal, and cellular effects occur regardless of sleep changes. He stresses the importance of consistent healthy light practices over weeks and months to see the full benefits. Dr. Moore shares that even as an expert in the field, he was shocked by some recent research findings. In particular, the large-scale studies showing 30 to 40% shorter lifespans for those with high nighttime light exposure were staggering. He emphasizes that these effects are seen even when controlling for other lifestyle factors, highlighting just how significant proper light exposure is for health and longevity. Dr. Moore expresses optimism that we're at a turning point where scientific understanding, public awareness, and technological solutions are converging. He sees addressing our light environment as a critical and achievable step 
in improving public health. By making informed choices about our light exposure and advocating for healthier lighting in our communities, we can dramatically impact our well-being and longevity. He encourages listeners to educate themselves and others, implement changes in their own lives, and push for broader societal shifts in how we approach lighting. 